All right. <coughs> Excuse my cough that won't go away. Um, so uh, this week uh, I'm dedicating solely to discussing Israel-Palestine conflict. I did have it integrated originally um, with another chapter, and I wanted to just really focus on this conflict um, because I feel like, well, first of all, I, I've researched it a lot, um, and I did a lot of work in grad school on Israel-Palestine conflict, but two, I, it's essential to understanding a lot of uh, what's going on in the Middle East. Um, now, it's a very difficult subject to teach in a neutral way, because once you really study it, the tendency is for a person to, to really take sides one or the other. <laughs> and I myself have found my own bias in the middle of the research. I'm going to do my best to try to give you a taste of both sides. Um, if you feel like I'm too biased, feel free to let me know, or if you want to throw some other sources in the um, discussion board of what you think. But um, as long as they're scholarly uh, and the discussion is civil, we can accept uh you know, whatever. So, um, first of all, I want to just like point out that this is a, a conflict over land, um, and I think it's fair to say that um, if everyone magically became atheist in uh, Israel and Palestine, the conflict would look very similar. <clears throat> there would just not be as many debates or conflicts over certain uh, religious spots. In fact, originally, um, the, 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 the nature of the conflict only really turned religious since the 1980s. Um, I want to dispel the myth that this is a primordial battle that has been taking place since Abraham, uh, you know, back in the Bible times. No, this is a modern conflict, okay? And um, I'm going to illustrate this to you. This is something that I is an indisputable. Rather, one is pro-Israeli or pro-Palestinian. This is a very recent conflict, and we're going to go into reasons why. Okay, so um, all right, moving on. Um, first of all, there's two stories to tell, and I don't want to look at these pictures too much. These are very sad pictures. <laughs> But when you have a conflict where two people are living in the same area and there's a conflict, um, people are dying. And um, Palestinians have disproportionately been killed as a, uh, um, num numerically compared to Israelis due to Israeli military superiority. But at the end of the day, if you were on a bus and there was a suicide bomber or near a bus that exploded and watched this, uh, certainly, you may have little sympathy for what the Palestinians might have to say. If you're a Palestinian uh, that just watched your child killed uh, and a, when a bomb was dropped or had your house demolished or went through some sort of uh, being shot by a Jewish settler, you may have little sympathy. And there's videos we can watch on YouTube that simply highlight... Uh, Jewish suffering under uh, Palestinian terrorism or Palestinian suffering under uh, Jewish, well, we could call it terrorism or military occupation. And at the end of the day, um, both peoples do have these stories. Um, and if you are Palestinian or if you're Israeli, then it might really be personal, right? So this is a history class that is a um, I'm teaching you world history over a modern living conflict going on right now as we speak. And so um, sometimes I have students that might be from uh, one of these parts of the world, and this shapes the way that they see things. As a historian, though, I want to try to show you, I want to try to help you understand the historical developments and the way that both sides have seen the conflict. And so, uh, what we'll do is, um, first, I will just talk about the land. The land has been called many things, and this is one of the big uh, um, debates. Is it Israel? Is it Palestine? Well, 
Um, when Jesus was around, it wasn't called Israel or Palestine. Um, it was Samaria, Judea, um, <coughs> provinces. Um, and um, it was often uh, referred to by the Greeks as Philistina or uh, named after the Phil Philistines. Um, when Rome... Uh, let's see, do I want to... No, I'm going to go back. Sorry. Um, in 70 CE, Rome uh, destroys the Jewish temple. Uh, Jews did have numerically, you know, uh, they did dominate the land, you know, during the time of Jesus. And then, um, like 150 uh, CE, um, basically, 150 years after Jesus, let's just... Uh, roughly put it, there was one more revolt, which Rome then changed the name, referring it to more like uh, uh, Palestine. Um, and uh, it was renamed that uh, after squashing another um, Jewish resistance to the Roman occupation. Over a thousand years later, though, the land became dominated by different people and influence influenced by other people and so um, by 1914 for example the majority were Arabs um, a large mainly Muslim large amount of Arab Christians uh, mainly Greek Orthodox uh, Roman Catholic and small pockets of religious Jews um, but predominantly an Arab country that was under Ottoman or Turkish rule okay so I'm just gonna leave it there kind of giving you a backdrop to um, the land and so then the question is if, if by 1914 and I think around 1914 Avi Schleim an Israeli historian himself claims that Jews were only about 10% even at that time well if Jews lost the being the majority such a long time ago and we end up in the early 20th century with uh, a, a really small minority still of, of Jewish population how do we get Israel how does this happen and, and what's going on that's what we're going to explore okay <laughs>